All right. I just did a shoulder, finished my shoulder set. In fact, I gotta log that in my log here. I really should have done that before I started this video, but it's not gonna take too much time. There we go. Um, so I guess I'll make one more video about the end of my job. Um, so yeah, told you, asked that girl, that cashier who I liked, if she wanted to go to lunch. She said, sure, where I left off. Um, and then she didn't say goodbye to me, if you remember. Didn't say, nice working with you, nothing like that. So I was like, all right, well, I guess she doesn't like me as much as I thought. I thought we were, at the very least, friends. I don't know. Maybe friends is a strong word. I guess we were acquaintances. I was hoping that it could turn into... I mean, obviously I was attracted to her, but... I don't know. I guess if you'd asked me you know, what happened about... What was it about? It's really been... been almost a month now. It's crazy. Time flies when you're not working. Um, actually, time flies when you're working, too. I guess I'm just old. Time flies, period. Um... So, you know, after that, I said I wasn't going to talk to her again, but I decided, you know what, I'll make an effort, you know, she said sure, maybe she just was in a weird mood that day, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know, I'll try to at least see if she wants to talk, so I sent her this message here, and the message was, let's see, what the hell was it, it's so long ago now. So I sent her a message that said, Hey, cashier, I won't say her name, even though I've said it before already. How's life treating you since I left the co-op? I had your trips to... I won't disclose where she went. She, I knew she was going to a couple places. She was going to some place immediately after work that day, and then she, I knew she had another vacation coming up that she told me that she was going to somewhere else. Oh. So I asked her... That's what I texted her. How's life treating you since you left the co-op? How did your trips to your two places that you went to go? And that was exactly, I think it was roughly, uh, uh, my last day was like the 16th, I think. So that was on the 28th. I waited, I guess, 12 days to ask something. She hadn't texted me a single thing. Um, so I thought, well, this is my last shot to reach out to her because I couldn't get her off my mind, even though I knew that I probably wasn't going to have a shot. But I figured out, well, see if I can get anything out of her. And what do you know? I got ghosted. That's what happened. I sent that text and nothing back. And I guess I've been ghosted. This is the second time I've been ghosted. The first time was another girl in Santa Cruz who I really liked and thought I was, you know, she was the one that, that invited me back to her place and I didn't make my move. And I guess she just thought of me as too timid and was expecting me to do something when she invited me back to her place and I was just like sat down in a chair and thought, all right, well, what's she going to like come out in, a, in some lingerie or something? Like I didn't know how things worked, you know, I didn't realize that I had to be she pretended to spill wine on her dress. She's like, well, let's go back. And like, why don't you escort me back to my place so I can change my shirt? That was the reason why we went back to her place. Um, the supposed reason, anyway. But it was clear she spilled the stuff on her shirt intentionally. I mean, I don't think she was even trying to hide it, really. And, yeah. I really had a shot that night with a girl that was way too hot, really. That girl was... You know, she was gorgeous. Definitely my type... I didn't make a move, and she probably wondered, what the hell is he doing sitting down in my chair, you know? She didn't She didn't make any move. She was waiting for me to make a move. I didn't make a move. She changed her shirt. We went back to the party, and then I'm in my mind. I'm like, well, I haven't blown it yet. She just knows now that I, you know, uh, that I, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I thought in my mind I showed her that I cared enough about her not to take advantage of her on the first date or whatever. But And that, that night or the next day, I think I... I sent her a message saying, hey, you know, how you doing, or something like that, and she, she, she ghosted me. That was 
that was even more painful, I think, because I knew I had a real shot, and I, didn't, I guess I didn't realize I was naive, you know, I thought that that was the beginning of our relationship, and it was the end when I didn't make a move on her. I don't know if she thought I was rejecting her, or if she just thought I was too timid, but that was my, one of my best chances. Uh, I was like, I only had like two really, really good chances, maybe, no, three, four. <laughs> I had four really, really good chances. I had a girl invite me up to her her own room in, in a cruise ship once. <laughs> she was a tall Norwegian woman. I mean, she was, I guess you could call her a girl. She was fairly young, I suppose. I don't know. She wasn't bad looking. I, <laughs> I was stupid not to take that one, too. But I don't know. I was nervous. And she wasn't quite my type. I don't know. She was pretty. I would have, looking back on it, that was the one time I actually got invited up to somebody's room and didn't go. You know. And one time a girl invited me to, said that she could make room on the couch so I could sleep next to her in another situation. That girl was alright. Not gorgeous, but she was pretty. To some extent. I think I let my roommate's opinion skew me because my roommate said, oh, whatever, she's not that good looking, but I don't know, she was cute, and she definitely wanted me that night, because she told me that she wanted to make room for me on the couch to sleep next to her, so that was a pretty obvious invitation, and then, um, actually, yeah, maybe I had five, it's funny, when I look back, I had a girl that, like, almost, like, followed me to the bathroom after I played keyboards one day, and, uh, she had a very feral look in her eye, <laughs> she was with a guy at the time, but I didn't realize that they were on the verge of breaking up, and, she really, she wanted to follow me into the shower, and I had to cl close the door on her. And, you know, in my younger days, I really had chances. And then another girl, the hottest girl that was ever interested in me, it came up to me in a bar and said, is this seat taken? That classic line. And at that time, I didn't realize how rare it was for girls to show overt interest like that. So she was making it perfectly clear to me that she was interested by asking if she could sit next to me and talk. You know, but at the time I had no idea. I thought that this was just the beginning, and that you know we'd get to know each other, and it was just didn't ever. And I ended up meeting with her a couple times at a party and something else. She wanted me to do nitrous balloons with her, but I didn't want to do it because I was, I don't know, I was under this impression like I was going to be corrupted by the nitrous balloons. I promised myself I was only ever going to do alcohol and weed, and I knew this girl liked coke too, and I didn't want to do coke. And I don't know, she was gorgeous though. I missed some pretty obvious, I guess, so I really about five major opportunities with, with beautiful girls, and then I had other opportunities with girls that were not, I wasn't particularly attracted to. So I'm not going to try to say it like I haven't had opportunities. I don't know why I had to go over this, just so you guys know that, you know, it wasn't like I, I'm not like your average incel, I guess. I don't even know if I'd call myself an incel, because I had chances that a lot of incels probably don't get. And I really wanted, wanted to be wholesome. You know, I wanted things to develop. I wanted to really know the person, and I wanted to really form a connection with somebody. And anyway, I but I digress, as they say. <laughs> um, so yeah, I sent that text to. This is the second time I got ghosted. I said, "Hey, you know, how's how's life treating you? How are your your trips that you took?" And she didn't she didn't get back to me. You know, I thought we knew each other. We worked together for. Maybe a total of five, six months, you know. I, I knew this girl for like five, six months. I really liked her. I liked talking to her, you know. Um, I don't know if at that point I just turned her off, you know. I don't know. Maybe, she didn't know. Maybe she didn't know I was interested in her the whole time. And when I asked, she was like, it was either that she didn't know I was interested in her. And when I asked, she was like, oh, God, he's an old perv. Or um, she was interested in me at one point, and but only for a fling, you know, because I'm old, so she wasn't going to be interested in a long-term relationship. I, I still have some inkling that maybe she thought that I was, you know, a ladies' man in the beginning, and she thought that I might sweep her off her feet, and when I didn't sweep her off her feet, she was like, oh, this guy's a, you know, this guy's pathetic. And that may be the way it went. In my mind, I still like to believe that, because I still swear I was getting some signs of, of interest early on, but I don't know. Maybe it was all in my head. It's very possible. But, you know, it was like, I guess I wanted, you know, 
I thought that she would at least maybe stay in contact with me, you know. I knew she, I mean, she didn't say goodbye, it was, it was tough, but I thought that she would at least maybe stay in touch with me a little bit, you know. I, I don't think I would have wanted her to tell me that, that she only wanted, at, at, at least back then, back when I sent that message, I was really hoping to just stay in contact with her. It, I wasn't necessarily going to go for the kill or ask for, you know, ask for her to go out or anything. But I thought that she would respond back and we'd at least still have something of a connection, we'd at least be in contact with each other, and it would open the door for us to potentially see each other at some point down the line, and maybe in the future, you know, I could convince her that I, I don't know, I could at least be her friend, I mean, I, I liked her enough to, to be her friend, I think it, back then, I was so infatuated with her, right when, about the time I sent the text, that, um, that, uh, I probably wouldn't have wanted to hear that, that you know, well, I don't like you like that, but we could still be friends, you know. But now that I've had some perspective and some time, I feel like um, I would take it, you know. I would take being friends with her. I liked her, you know. I liked her beyond her looks. I mean, I don't like her as much now because I don't like people who ghost, you know. It's, it's a major sign of immaturity. And it's kind of shocking to me that a girl that I felt like I had a connection with doesn't even want to take the time to say hello, or, you know, doesn't care about me at all, that could not give less of a crap, you know, is so uninterested, and is so worried that she's going to lead me on by saying something, that she thought it was better to say nothing at all, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's irresponsible, I guess this is the first message I'm going to make for you young ladies, don't ghost guys, you know, I mean, if she had ghosted me for a while, and then got back to me eventually, and said, you know, Maybe if she'd taken some time and then eventually got back to me and said, you know, Tim, you know, I like you, you know, but I'm not interested in you in that way, you know. And gave me a reason, you know. You're too old or, you know, uh, I don't know. Even if she told me I was too old, I could live with it. It'd, it'd be better to have an answer, you know. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. But... I ended up waiting after saying that. She ghosted me for another, what was it? Well, let's see. She ghosted me for about a week after that. And I came to the realization that she wasn't going to write me back. So I sent her one last text. I had written out another text that was this long text sort of saying, like, well, you know, I know I don't have any chance with you now, but could you at least you know, help me out. I have this issue with, you know, girls I'm attracted to. I always seem to turn them off. Maybe you can me some perspective, you know, help me improve on this sort of thing, you know, I, 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 you know, I wanted to send that to her, and maybe I should have, I don't know, but she wasn't responding, and, you know, I just sent her this, I said, so I went for a walk with my, my other co-worker, who was still working at the co-op with her, um, said, I went for a walk with this, this person two days ago, and he mentioned that you told him that you got my last text, and said, I should really get back to him, that's, that's one thing that did happen, I went for a walk with my coworker, and he was saying that, 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 that this girl had gotten my text, and she said, I should really get back to him, so, so she actually acknowledged, she, I know she didn't block my number, she actually got my text, and she just decided she was ghosting me, so she told my coworker, oh, I should really get back to him, but it was clear after another week had passed, she had no intention of getting back to me. So I said, pretty clear to me now, though, that you don't really want to stay in contact. Well, I find that disappointing. I'm sure you have your reasons. Uh, and then I put in parentheses, and I imagine you aren't telling me what they are so you won't hurt my feelings, which is understandable. Now, that isn't the only reason why she wasn't telling me why she wasn't interested in me. She also was, wasn't telling me because she didn't want to leave me on. She probably thought that even if she told me she wasn't interested, that the fact that she contacted me back would make me think that we would still be in contact and maybe I'd still have a shot. You know? So she really just wanted to cut things off entirely. But, you know, the mature thing to do would have been to tell me straight out what the problem was or that, you know, even tell me that she just wasn't interested in me in that way, you know. And I wouldn't have dealt with it well then, but, you know, I could have processed it and been like, okay, fine, you know, maybe we can still have some kind of relationship, you know. I still liked her as a person to some extent. I don't know. I don't like her as much now. You know, this ghosting. You're, you're, you're not a good person if you do this, ladies. It's your responsibility to, you know, if 
you know somebody and you feel like you've developed any kind of connection with them, you know, I, 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 te I was texting with this girl, not like regularly, but, you know, here and there we texted and it's not like we were, we had a deep relationship. But I worked with her long enough, you know, five, six months. We knew each other, essentially. You know. Maybe we were acquaintances, but, you know, I feel like if you know somebody that long, you owe them an explanation as to why you want to cut off all contact. So, I don't know. Very immature. Anyway, I said, I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable by contacting you outside of work, but for the sake of easing your mind, this will be the last message you'll get from me. It's nice knowing you and working with you, and I wish you well wherever life takes you. So I try to take the high road and, you know, be gracious about the fact that she had no interest in talking to me anymore. Maybe that wasn't what I should have done. I don't know. Maybe I should have been honest and just come out and said, I can't believe you would ghost me, you know? I thought we knew each other, you know? But I didn't want to sound bitter. You know, I didn't want to sound like, um, you know, I didn't want to make myself look any worse than I already did. She already apparently thought I was a perv for asking at all. And I just asked him to go out to lunch, you know. It wasn't like I, I don't know, I didn't feel like what I said was that, was that, you know, out of line. Like I said, it was the last hour, the last day of us working together. It wasn't like she was trapped. It wasn't like she would have to do anything with me. And, so yeah, that's the last message I sent, and that was on July 4th, and as far as I can tell, I'll never talk to her again, now I have to actively avoid her, because otherwise it's going to be awkward, you know, I don't, she obviously doesn't want to talk to me, so, I can't very well, you know, put myself in places where she is, you know, that wouldn't be appropriate. So, um... fantasy baseball partner. Anyway, um, so yeah, I was, I was just, uh, you know, so disappointed by this outcome, you know. I don't know. I may be better off not being around her, but she was so gorgeous, you know, to even have a chance to hang out with her as a friend and appreciate her beauty in a, from a, you know, from a platonic level, I would have taken it, you know. But she was not interested at all. Not even interested in... I guess she felt like we didn't have any connection. I mean, on some level, I guess we didn't have a lot in common. But I always enjoyed talking with her. I always felt like she had a good, you know, head on her shoulders for the most part, except for now that I'm seeing the ghosting thing. It's not a good sign. I don't know. I think I... And also seeing her with other guys coming into the co-op with, with, with other guys made me so jealous, you know, that... Maybe that's why it's better she didn't talk to me, I guess. Maybe it's better that she isn't around me so I don't have to feel the jealousy of, of listening to her tell me about other guys she's dating or watching her flirt with other guys. Maybe it's for the better, you know? But I am sad I don't get to see her anymore. I'm sad I have to actively avoid her now. You know, I'm not going to go back into the co-op. And, and I was hoping in the future that I'd be able to go up to Burlington and see her up there. Because that's where she goes to school. But um, now it's like if I go to Burlington and I see her, I gotta sh you know shield my face. You know I can't talk to her. She doesn't want to see me. You know, she doesn't want to see me at the co-op anymore. It's done. It's just hard. It's hard to let go of her permanently. But whatever. It's over. And I guess you know she's not as great as I thought she was if she's ghosting people. And now I've actually met another girl who's kind of cute. That invited me to her birthday party, but I think she has a man already, she probably just likes me as a friendly type. I'm surprised she invited me to her birthday party, because she has a guy already, why would she do that, you know? And maybe she just thinks I'm friendly, and, and that's fine. This girl that I'm, that's, you know, that I'm, was invited me to this party is uh, not quite as, as much of a knockout as, as the one at work, but she's still very pretty nice eyes, just like the one at work did. I'm a sucker for nice eyes. Um, I'm going to go to the party, but, you know, I'm not going to say anything. And it's like, I just feel like 
you know, it's just having this experience with this girl just makes me feel like I can't win, you know. If I mean, in the end, my situation is bad enough that I, I just have a hard time imagining any girl's ever going to find me attractive again. You know? I really thought that this girl found me attractive. All the signs were pointing to her being attracted to me, and in the end, I guess she wasn't for whatever reason. And now I feel the same way with this new girl. It's like there's lots of fish in the sea, they say, and maybe there's a girl that would, you know, think I was, you know, a cool enough person that, that she could find me attractive, but... My life living situation, my lack of accomplishment, you know, my, um, my dependence on other people, my inability to, you know, build something for myself in the world. You know, I don't know. I don't feel that ashamed about it. There are people in other countries that live with their parents, you know. I mean, what I have built for the world is, you know, I'm not a bad person, you know. That should count for something, I think. But doesn't seem, you know, you, you've got to be some kind of a leader, you've got to take on responsibility, you know, you've got to, you've got to live your passion or something like that. I tried to live my passion, you know, I put a lot of effort into being a musician, you know, I'm not, I spent, started too late, and I gave up too soon, you know, I could have kept pushing a little bit, I mean, maybe I didn't give up too soon, I gave up when I was 29, by that point, it's hard to become a, a professional musician, so I just thought, oh, well, it's my chances are up, I, and now looking back, I, I shouldn't have given it up, at least as a hobby. I should have I should have kept pushing my skills. I could have at least been playing shows out, and that would have given me something to hang my hat on, you know. Maybe I wouldn't have been a career musician, but at least I would have had gigs, and it would have been something where, you know. I guess this is a message to those of you who are musicians, you know. Keep playing, you know. Keep playing even if you, if you have the time. Obviously, it's hard to keep playing, but I had time, you know. Even working 40 hours a week, I could have been practicing regularly, and I could have been getting the skills together. And you think, oh, well, what's the point if you're not going to get paid for it? But, you know, there's some power in going out and putting on a show. And even if you're just getting paid for one-off gigs here and there, you know, it shows that you're dedicated to something, you know. It shows that you, if you really care about making music, then you don't have to do it for a living. You know, you have you got to get out there and make put out the best show you can just so that you can, you know, prove to people that, you know, you cared enough about it to put the time into it to, to you know, entertain people even for a night. I should have stuck to it, you know. I went and saw, like, not long after I left the co-op, I went and saw, before this whole texting thing happened, I went and saw a band. And it was, like, a little local band, and it was, like, they I didn't know their name, you know, but they, the, the guy, you know, they, they, they put on a good show. I enjoyed the music, and I was, like, you know, I looked at them and think, well, how did they got their shit together? I never got my shit together enough to play more than one show. I played one show at a bar, you know, and we sucked. We weren't half as good as the as the people that were playing there that night. But you know, but at least I did it once, and I should have kept doing it. You know, it gives you something to be proud of. You know, maybe I'd have more confidence if I stuck it through, even if I. So anyway, yeah, I feel like I'm doomed with this new girl. I almost feel like I have no right to even make any kind of... This girl, by the way, is also young, the new girl, but not as young. She's a more reasonable version of young, although still out of my, my range. The new girl is 27. She's turning 27. Um, half plus seven rule means I should be going for 29 at the youngest, so she's still under the number. And she said something about her man, so I think she's got a boyfriend anyway, so maybe she just thinks I'm friendly and... I don't know, though. She, she was, you know, she was, she, she definitely likes me. She's, she made time to talk to me, you know. At one point, we moved, uh, this last week, I moved to a different table because it was shadier at the other table, and she followed me over to the other table, you know. She didn't have to follow me. She could have stayed, you know. Um, she followed me over, and then when, when it shaded back at the original table, I went back, and she followed me back, you know. She likes me for whatever reason. She would take out time to talk to me. Maybe she likes me as, as someone who could be a potential friend, and I'm fine with that now, you know. After this last experience, I think I've, I've taught myself that you can't get too attached to any one girl, you know, because it just makes you smacks of desperation. 
but it's, it's so hard, you know, because I, I know if, if, this, if this new girl finds out about who I really am, she'll probably just be, you know, not even want me. It's like I feel like the same thing's going to happen. I'm not even going to get to be your friend, you know. I just want to, I just want to be friends. Is it so wrong to want to be friends with young, beautiful girls, you know? <laughs> I don't know. At this point, I'll, I'll take a friend. You know, I'm just tired of hanging out. You start hanging out. I've been hanging out with people in my age group, and it's like, I, I they're, it's great. We have a good time. I like the people my age, you know. But it reminds you how old you are, you know. Makes you miss being young and hanging out with, you know. I didn't hang out with a lot of beautiful girls when I was young. It seemed like every time I had a chance to be with a beautiful girl, it didn't happen didn't happen romantically. And so then they were done. They didn't want a friendship, you know, which was disappointing to me because I always wanted to form a friendship with a girl before I left with her and no girls would let me get to that point you know if they were attracted to me they wanted me to make a move immediately and when i didn't they thought oh he's not interested and they they had no interest in, in even staying friends you know which was disappointing i don't know that's all i want you know i just want to get to know somebody first get to know somebody i'm attracted to and then if i feel like it's right you know i feel like the big problem for me is that the more i get to know a girl the more they get to know me the more they realize that i haven't done enough that i you know i'm lacking I mean, they can sense my desperation they can sense my loneliness they can sense my inability to you know build any meaning in my life and they get turned away and that's it so i don't know i'm gonna go to this party and I'll just try to be, it's like, I feel like part of the reason why this girl might be, might think I'm interesting is because I'm so quiet when I go to this group that we're going to. I don't say much. It's, a, it's an art group, and I, I really get into making my pictures, even though I'm not very good at drawing. I don't particularly do a good job, but I, it, it makes me quiet, you know. I sit there and focus on the art half as much as I do talking. Or, I mean, I only talk, but that's... I mean, I just focus on talking half as much as I do it on the art. Um, and it makes me, I feel like, more of the strong, silent type, you know. I don't blabber away. I don't feel, you know, it's a nice way to, to take my mind off of trying to fill space, you know. I probably seem like I'm deep because I'm <laughs> quiet and occasionally come out with things but don't, don't say much, you know. I feel like that's what girls like. I like guys who don't talk too much. I'm gonna try to go to this party and get everyone else to talk and not talk, not to say a, th a thing about myself. I feel like the less everyone knows about me, the better. I hope they don't get in too much interrogation because I gotta be honest about, you know, I should be honest about my situation. I, they say you have to kind of accept where you are and be cool with it, but it's kind of like I, I just I can't accept where I am, you know. And if I know the more I talk, the more I'm gonna blow my cover it's for being, you know, disappointed in myself and and, and disappointed in my situation and. And it's going to be tough. I am seeing a therapist, by the way. I've been to the therapist. I've been to a couple of different therapists. It's not doing much yet. I'm trying to get something started with a regular. Someone was supposed to contact me from one of the two therapists' office, and they haven't. So I don't know. Maybe I should check my email. I think I've been checking my email. I don't see anything. But um, oh, but uh, I'm starting to see a therapist. I'm scheduled for another appointment on the 22nd i'm hoping that makes things better i don't know if i believe in this or not but i guess i'm giving it a shot because my insurance insurance is paying for it for the first time and so i'm like okay my insurance is going to pay for it i'm doing this hopefully i won't get too many many uh too many deductible bills i'm not expecting them to tell me much that's going to make me feel better i'd like them to tell me that i have a shot with 27 year old girl <laughs> she's probably more mature anyway i bet you with the 27 year old it's probably like more kind of my speed you know the 20 year old is probably definitely never particularly realistic she was so beautiful i was just so attracted to her i couldn't help it 27 still out of the range but this girl's very pretty also so she's got a she's got a boyfriend though so i'm, I'm not expecting anything to happen but maybe we can be friends and down the road if she finds that she likes me somehow in spite of all my my shortcomings if she decides she's done with her boyfriend then something could happen who the hell knows probably too old for her also but 
We'll see. I'm going to go to the party and try to pretend like I'm a cool guy. It's not going to be easy. But yeah, I guess the moral of the story is, let me wrap it up. We're at a half hour here. If you're a girl, don't ghost the guy, please. I don't know. Just be honest. I, I, I kind of didn't want the girl to tell me that, I didn't want my ghosting girl to tell me that, that she wasn't interested. But looking back now, now that I've had a week to think about it where I know she's we're done contacting, it would have been nice to get an honest answer, you know. And especially honesty, you know. It would be especially nice if she said, well, you know, I was attracted to you at one point, but, you know, I realized that, you know, you, you have things you need to work on or things like that. And I really, even that, I would have taken that, you know. You know, they, they, no girl will ever admit to being attracted to you at any point if she's now done with you, you know. That's, that, to me, is lame, you know. Just be honest, you know. I don't know if this girl was ever attracted to me, so maybe I'm making that a part up in my head, but, but, you know. If she if she had been and she was honest about it, I would have tremendous respect for her, you know. Her, tremendous respect for telling me that, that I screwed it up for myself, you know. I still wonder if I should have sent that other email that was more direct about how I felt about the situation. Because maybe she would have just respected me more for just coming out and saying that I, I, I was interested in her, you know. I didn't actually say that. I sort of tried to make small talk, and, and she probably definitely wasn't interested in that. So, I don't know. But if you're if, if you have a guy who you think is interested in you... You know, don't be mean. Don't ghost them. This is immature behavior. You know, just be honest with them. They'll live with it. You know, it's 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 uncomfortable, it's, but it's the right thing to do. You know, it's what you're supposed to do. Um, give us a break. You know, we have enough of a tough life as it is. You know, I'm not trying to say give us a break like sleep with us just for, just for the sake of it. Obviously not. You know, if you don't want to sleep with us, you have no obligation to. Obviously, or you know, you shouldn't do it out of pity because that's almost even worse but but at the very least be honest with us and tell us you know either I was never interested or I was interested but you screwed it up maybe help you know I could use the help from a pretty girl you know but most most girls it's like this it's, it's, it's to me it's like the last thing I'll say about this is the whole rich get richer thing with with girls and relationships it's it's so unfair you know it's like I suffered in life not of my own doing. Maybe I wasn't resilient. You know, I could have been resilient. I, I was put into a tough situation that I, I had no responsibility for. And I could have reacted better. I could have used it, you know, I could have I could have been stronger. But should I be punished for not reacting well? You know, should I be punished for taking it to heart and being sensitive? And, you know, I was sensitive, you know. I, 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 I really struggled, you know, I, I, I was naive, I wanted to believe the world was a good place, and the world smacked me down, you know, and it's like, it follows me for the rest of my life, you know, and girls don't want to help you, you know, they're always saying, well, you got to get your own life together first, and then you can have a relationship, but, you know, there's a lot of people don't have their lives together that have a relationship, and, you know, everyone needs love, you know, Everyone needs to be, have physical touch, you know, without that, you know, every time a girl who I'm even remotely attracted to touches me, it's like, you know, I know what I'm missing, I can feel it, you know, it's, it's so hard to go through your life with feeling like, you know, no one you're attracted to ever cares about you at all, you know. And it, I'm not trying to say that I expect to be saved by people, but, you know, maybe a little help, you know, some advice. You know, don't throw people away just because they've had a tough time. I feel like so much of this is this, this self-help people that tell people, oh, well, you know, if somebody is, you know, negative, you know, don't let them drag you down. Only surround yourself with successful people. What does that mean for the poor people that struggle in life? That they need to be outcast from society permanently because they're going to bring you down with them? I mean, you know, I can understand, you know, I don't think I'm going to bring people down with me. I don't know, you know. It's like I feel like, you know, maybe I'm negative. Maybe I maybe I make a lot of these videos that aren't particularly uplifting or helping anybody particularly. But it's like I have good things to offer still. I'm not a terrible human being, you know. I don't deserve to be outcast from society forever because I'm a loser, you know. And the rich get richer part of this is just so, you know, all these guys that are successful, you know, they're going to be, they're just because they're successful and living a, a life that they can feel proud of doesn't mean they're going to be good people, you know. You shouldn't only associate with people who are successful because they can be mean assholes sometimes too and sometimes they don't deserve your attention, you know. 
It's so lame that these people just, you know, they already have everything they, they want in the world, and they still, and, and, and that's what attracts what, you know, people to them, is that they already have everything, you know. Rich get richer, you know, not just with money, but in terms of, you know, your well, your mental well-being, you know, it's like people cast you aside these days if you, if you don't have your shit together, you know. So many of us don't have our shit together. You know, how is it fair to, to cast us aside? You know, don't don't you don't people who have their shit together want to help people that don't? You know, a little bit. You know, it's just the, the selfishness is at all time highs. You know, if you're if you're not pushing me forward, then I have no use for you. You know, that's what people say. For guys like me, you know, we could really use a little help. You know, we could use encouragement. We could use guidance, and not just from other guys. You know. Use guidance from pretty girls, you know. You don't have to be attracted to us, but help us, you know. Throw us a bone. <laughs> you know, give us an idea about what we're lacking. You know? I have to rely on a psychologist for that now. You know, it'd be nice if I could didn't have to pay money to somebody who to to care about me. You know, someone offered some amount of caring just for being a half decent human being, which I believe I am. That's it. Don't ghost girls. Offer some guidance, please. We all desperately need it. I mean, those of us who struggle, we need the guidance. And we will get over the fact that you don't like us. You know. If, and don't talk about your boyfriends or your conquests either, because we don't want to hear about it. But, you know, be a friend. You know. If, if nothing, don't ghost. Be a friend.